For those of you who are taking thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about reasoning patterns. As we are developing our literature review, we're thinking about how to align the thesis statement, specifically the list of reasons or the list of ways, how we can then bring that into the main sections of our literature review. I want us to be thinking a lot about the reasoning patterns that are going to be most appropriate for our literature review. So uh, I've included this page that you can access with today's date in the Academic Planner in Thesis Seminar in Notion. And uh, we've noticed, or I've listed here, uh, different options that you can consider when organizing your text. So I want to talk about these options. Some are better than others. In fact, towards the bottom, I'll indicate a, a couple of text structures or organizational patterns that we might even avoid. So let's take a look at some of the common ways that we can organize our ideas at the thesis statement, thesis statement level or in broad terms, how we can organize the main sections of our literature review. So one way to do that is by the order of importance. So as you're listing out the ways or the reasons, you might decide the sections that you're developing to begin maybe with the least important reason or the least important way and build to the most important reason or the most important way. Again, this is the level or at the level of the thesis statement or at the level of the main sections of your paper, of your literature review. Another way to think about it is in terms of uh, the topic. So maybe a reason or a different way that you're going to explain in each of the sections are, is topical, and you could organize it in that way. It could also be sequential, all right? So each of the reasons or each of the ways could follow some process or sequence depending on uh, what, you're, uh, what you're describing. So these of the list that I have included here, these first three, I think, are typically more appropriate for an or organizational pattern at the thesis level, these first three. Order of importance, topical, or sequential. Now, the rest of the options below could be used in combination at the section level and or at the paragraph level. So we have a cause and effect, spatial, compare and contrast, problem and solution, and at the very bottom, chronological. We'll talk about chronological here in a minute. But think of now, once you have def decided on the main sections of your literature review, as you're going into each of those sections, you're going to then need to think about uh, which organiz organizational patterns are going to be most appropriate. So at the paragraph level, if you're thinking about the main idea of each body paragraph, then you're going to need to think, okay, how am I going to organize these ideas? All of these options are available. Although I only mentioned thesis statement for order of importance, of course, you could consider uh, order of importance between paragraph to paragraph and even within each paragraph when you're leaving evidence uh, or including evidence within each body paragraph, you could also list the evidence as uh, in order of importance. So don't think that the, uh, these, um, these patterns towards the bottom only are possible uh, you know, for the sections and paragraphs. You, all of these are possible at, within the section level and the paragraph level. So I'll probably go back and change that to include not only thesis statement, but also you could include it at the section and paragraph level. All right, so we have here cause and effect, spatial, compare and contrast, problem solution. These are, these can all be used in combination with other organizational patterns. So you might have one organizational pattern from paragraph to paragraph, and then when you go in to develop an a individual paragraph, you might choose a different organizational pattern. Uh, each paragraph might follow different organizational patterns. So maybe the first paragraph follows a cause and effect, maybe the second 
paragraph follows a sequential par uh, organizational pattern and so on. Okay, Again, it depends on the topic sentence or the main idea for that particular paragraph. It also depends on the uh, heading and the description of the heading, which organizational pattern is most appropriate for that section. So all of these, I think, are good options, uh, with the exception of probably the chronological uh, option here. There could be an exception where maybe you're listing three or four pieces of evidence within the same paragraph. Maybe it's chronological in that sense, right? And, and it follows a, uh, an order or organizational pattern based on date. That's possible. We're probably not going to organize a complete section around a chronological uh, organizational pattern. This is certainly uh, possible. I'm not saying that we, could, we would never do that. But in most of our cases, we're building sections that are talking about how and why. And I would rather you think more in terms of answering those question words as you're developing uh, these sections and uh, you know, not get caught up in a history lesson, so to speak, uh, when you're developing your, your ideas. Now, to conclude, I'll mention a few text structures or a few organizational patterns that I would avoid. Number one, sections with only definitions, where maybe you begin a section with defining a lot of terms and then going into the discussion. I would typically avoid those kinds of organizational structures or text structures. I would try to avoid, in general, defining or having too many definitions. We can describe or include definitions within our discussion of what and how and why and where. where. In fact, answering the question what would include a definition, but I would include it within the how and the why and the where and the with whom within that section or paragraph. So avoid a lot of definitions, right? And um, make sure that you have no references at the bottom of your paper that are dictionaries or encyclopedias, including Wikipedia, of course. We want to avoid those types of references. Definitions should come from experts, from research, from articles primarily um, to support your, your ideas. The second text structure that I would typically avoid is moving from the general to the specific or the theoretical to the practical. I see some examples of texts that will begin theoretical and then at the very end, and usually a very small section, there is some discussion of the practical applications, let's say the teaching techniques that came from the theoretical base. I would typically avoid that. Why would I suggest that? Well, because most of our qualitative studies are answering the question how or why. And so in both cases, regardless if you're focusing on the how or the why, we're going to be looking for uh, teachers or behaviors in the classroom that support some form of answer to a particular problem. So we're really going to be wanting to know the what, the how, and the why, and the where, and the when, and with whom, of certain teaching practices, certain learning strategies, materials, technologies, attitudes, behaviors, beliefs, etc., that relate to a possible solution. How can we address a particular problem? So we want our theory to primarily focus on, on that as well. We want it to be rich in terms of describing the how and the why and the where throughout the document, throughout the literature review, throughout your theory. So if we spend too much time or even half of the literature review on the theoretical or the general, then typically we, we're not spending enough time on the specifics or the practical aspects of the phenomena that we're researching. If we are talking about a particular reason, and we're listing that in our first section, reason number one, we're going to talk right away about the how and the what that relate to that reason right away. We're not going to wait to the very end to talk about the how. We want to bring it in from the very beginning. And so we're going to, we're going to um, connect 
the reasons with the hows, the, the actual practicality part of that, uh, that rationale right from the beginning. And this is assuming a, an organizational pattern that focuses on reasons. Of course, if you're focusing on how, we're going to be talking right away, as, of course, about how it happens, and, and that'll be very practical. But then we can also talk about, well, why is that? Why is that practice important? We can talk about the, the theory, the theoretical aspects of that right away. So again, we're actually mixing the practical and the theoretical throughout our discussion, kind of by a point-by-point -point analysis or a point-by-point -point, uh, structure, okay, if that makes sense. So a couple of structures to try to avoid, sections with only definitions or too many definitions throughout our paper, and coming up with uh, a structure from the theoretical to the practical. Again, we want the practical aspects throughout, kind of sprinkled throughout the, uh, the literature review. In this page, take a look at this, um, this video. It uh, talks about these organizational patterns that I've shared here. But in terms of our thesis paper and our experience with our research for this course, uh, this, these are the, the patterns that I think will relate to our particular set of circumstances for this particular class. So I hope this helps. Uh, this is what we're discussing a lot this week and next as we're developing and thinking about our thesis statement and our main sections first, and then we dive into each of the sections thinking in terms of organization. Most of my conversations with students uh, when thinking about their literature review and helping them develop their literature review, I would say 80%, 80 to 90% of our discussions are going to relate to organization, not grammar, not punctuation, right? Well, those are important. The mechanics of writing are, is very important, but those discussions are usually at the very end of the process, and they take a very little uh, amount of time uh, when compared to our discussions about organization. Organization is really important in terms of how do we articulate our message, how do we organize our ideas so that someone else can easily understand what we're saying. How can we organize, organize our ideas in a way that we can be understood by or from our target audience? So uh, I hope this helps, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Send me a message via chat in Microsoft Teams. Of course, you can leave comments in Microsoft Word. If you have specific questions about any uh, content in Notion, you can also select the text and leave a comment via uh, this option here by clicking and sending me uh, a message this way as well. All right, so we'll see you guys soon.